This is actually called an airtight zipper. Oh, okay. Yep. Not like the one on our jeans. No, not at all. And yes, they do have other methods where they roll up and they clamp. I'm still, I'm gonna use the word flabbergasted that it's airtight. Cause I don't think a zipper is airtight, but it works. Episode nine, Coffee Break. This week is a little bit different. You guys reach out with some technical questions ever so often, and I'm not the best person to answer it. Uh, so this week we brought in Ken DeCoste, director of millwork here at NS Builders. And you guys have asked multiple times, what is a vacuum bag and why do we use it and why do we have it in the shop and why did it take so long to get one? Actually, I think it was one of the first tools we got. I think it was, yeah. Um, but you came in, you came from a heavy background of doing veneers. Let's start with the basics. What is the vacuum bag? So a vacuum bag, uh, it consists of two parts. There's the, the bag and the pump. Mm -hmm. Now the bags are either made from vinyl or polyurethane. Okay. Reason being- What is this one? This one is polyurethane. Okay. Reason being they're clear. So you can see through them, you can, you can line up your pieces as you're working. Is there a benefit to having polyurethane over vinyl? Yes, the puncture resistance of a polyurethane bag is much higher than with a, a vinyl bag. Okay. Um, there, the flexibility of a polyurethane bag is, is far greater than the vinyl as well. Is it, so I'm, I have no idea. Is polyurethane more elastic? I feel like vinyl, I'm thinking it's, it, it, you, if you stretch it, it, it can te tear a so, lot easier. So the polyurethanes are much more flexible and then they'll, they'll return back to their flat shape much faster than a, um, a vinyl bag. Gotcha. So this is a polyurethane bag. What size do we have here? Uh, we have a five foot by 10 foot. So these are available in uh, any size you can think of, even custom sizes. And you know they all roll up into compact tubes so you can store them anywhere in your shop if you can't leave it out full time. For a while we had this square like six by six box that we rolled it up that it shipped in and we just stored it in. Since then we've actually designed the table to have a slot in it. Five by 10, I think this is probably a question a lot of people ask is what size should I buy? You can get a four by eight, but you're gonna want to go five by 10 to have that room for the panel stock, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, unless you're a smaller shop and you're, you're let's say the max size you're gluing up is a, a four by four, right. you don't need a five by 10 bag. But it's nice to be able to buy a full sheet and do a full veneer. Exactly. Can you do more than one sheet in this? Yes, we can. Do you know, is there a maximum? Uh, I guess you're, you're just limited by whatever size uh, your bag is. So keep in mind that as you go up, it's going to take away from that overall length and right. width. Sure. This one has a zipper on it. Yep. Which I'm still, I'm gonna use the word flabbergasted that it's airtight. Cause I don't think a zipper is airtight, but it works. Uh, we, I recently found out that this isn't common. Someone had commented on one of our videos saying, wait, does that thing have a zipper? Normal, I guess he has one that rolls up and he clamps, which sounds like a- Yep. So I, I, as far as I, I know, this is actually called an airtight zipper. Oh, okay. Not yep. like the one on our jeans. No, not at all. Uh, and yes, they do have other methods where they roll up and they clamp, um, as well as there's even tables that have a lift up mechanism. I've seen that. And I'm not exactly 100% sure how those ones seal, but I, I do believe it's different than a zipper or the clamp. So what are some of the important things to know? Because I remember, what is this called? Not a spoil board. A plaid. A, pla a plaid? Platin. Platin. I'm thinking of a CNC when I say spoil board. What's, and I think for me, it's kind of obvious, but for those that don't know, what is the purpose of that? So first off, keeping your, uh, your bag flat. Dead is, flat. It, dead flat is key. Because oh. I'm gonna stop you because whatever you're clamping, if you want it to be flat, the subsurface has to be dead flat, right. which is why we built a table for this mm -hmm. to make sure it was flat and level in all directions. So it was always staying true. Right. So, so go ahead. So, so think about if you had it on just sawhorses, that, that platen's gonna um, you know, sag. Mm -hmm. And then therefore your pieces are gonna sag and whatever it's glued up at, it's gonna keep that shape. So getting back to the platen here, we put curves in them. Now what this curve does is it allows for the pump to pull the air from the entire bag. Otherwise, if you didn't have this, it's gonna get stuck and basically um, stick to itself, which would allow air pockets throughout the bag. And obviously you don't want that. You want a nice uh, even pressure surface, even pressure clamping over your whole surface. And this is inside the bag. It is. So that's important to know. Yep. So inside the bag, you put your material on top of that, you turn the pump on and you suck the air out of it. So what are, you know, I'm looking at this real quick and we're, I want to get to these, but I see two holes in our platen. 
Yep. What are these for? So those are what feed into the pump. Okay. So on the pump, it has these, these two uh, hoses, basically, that stick into the bag, go through the bag into the platen, mm -hmm. and that's what extracts the air from the bag. If you notice, they're lined up with the kerfs going both directions so that it can pull air out of the entire space. So you turn that pump on, it sucks all the air out of the bag, that's it? That's it. Does that pump continue, continue to run? It has multiple settings, pressure settings. So you can actually adjust that machine to have different pressures. Exactly. I mean, so we're, we have a couple different examples in front of us. The one that we don't have on that in front of us is the glass. You, you recently vacuum pressed glass, and I think all of us kind of stood back waiting for that thing to pop. It didn't because you can, you can adjust the pressure. Exactly. So what do we have in front of us here? And, and walk me through what's the difference in, in kind of... Touching back to the glass. So what we did there was we had these large doors, uh, closet doors that were going to get full floor to ceiling glass. Um, we didn't want to glue them up on site. We were afraid that, you know, with the, with the mastic, we'd get a little bit of um, a fun house effect. So we threw them in the bag, very low pressure, just enough to, to get everything nice and dead flat, and it worked great. So what he means by the fun house is when you distort a mirror, you get that kind of skinny fat look to yourself rather than that true flat mirror. And when, if you've ever installed mirror or glass or something against the wall, they typically, and in the instructions, they tell you to do uh, dollops of, of mastic on the wall. You're basically pressure fitting it. And, you know, not only were, was the concern the fun house, but also the, con the, the other concern was the fact that we wanted these to be as flat, as, uh, flat and tight to the, the substrate as possible. With the dobs, we ran the risk of that mastic holding it up. And we actually did a side-by-side -side comparison, and there was a pretty significant, I mean, a heavy 30 seconds. You could see light through it yeah. all day. So it, doing it in the bag really gets that even disbursement of pressure on that mirror to make sure it's dead flat. And basically at that point, I don't think we separated it because I don't think we could, but that mastic is really spreading out much, much farther. Yep, and we, uh, important to note, we didn't do it in dollops. We actually put it on with a spreader. So similar to like a thin set application. Yeah. Gotcha. So okay. full, full coverage. Um, a couple other examples. We recently did uh, another out of the box kind of idea. We veneered some steel. We're making a magnetic uh, jewelry pegboard, if you would. So we uh, threw some veneer on some steel. I'm gonna take a little bit of time to like gloat about this because in the drawings it talked about a pegboard for hanging jewelry and I was fine with it, but I just- I couldn't I, find a good option. We didn't have good options for hooks. We didn't, I, it just didn't sound sexy. Who wants to look at all those holes? And so I was like, what if we just magnetized it? And then we like immediately go into what if we veneered steel? And that's ultimately what we came up with. So you guys gotta stay tuned for uh, the reveal at our Weston project because that is a huge, it's actually not a huge focal point in the room, but it's definitely gonna be a focal point in our video because it's, it's sick. Something different. Yeah. Uh, so going to, to more common stuff, let's say we have an inch and a half thick shelf, right? How are we gonna get that? If you take two pieces of three quarter inch, yeah, you can clamp it up with you know, your standard clamps and some calls, but you're still gonna have a little bit of waviness to it. You're not gonna get an even pressure throughout the whole piece. Mm. Perfect application for the vacuum bag. So what that allow us to do, nice tight seam through two pieces, dead flat, and our shelf is good to go. Super simple. Now, one thing to, that's really important to note is balancing the panel when you get into veneering. So, and I'm gonna let you explain what that is because that's something I wasn't aware of and I've actually seen the, the effect of not balancing a panel. Yep, so we, we can talk about that in this sample here. Um, probably one of the most common uses that we use it for in our shop is veneering. Now, what that is, is we'll take some very thin, paper thin wood and our substrate, and we can basically make our own plywood, our own uh, you know, MDF. And it's important to note, you can't, you can't just veneer one side of it. If you were to put this in the um, backing bag, it would come out and sure, it might be straight for a little bit, but eventually it's going to get uh, a nice cup to it, a nice bow. Because you're actually changing the surface tension. Exactly, right. yep. So we do both sides always, no questions asked. Right. Um, but you can use a less expensive veneer on the side that might not be exactly. seen. It's very similar to if you're painting a piece of MDF. If you paint one side and leave it, it's going to do the same exact thing because the surface tension changes. Anytime you add, you know, if you add one layer to something or, or two layers, you're adding two layers to the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. you got to keep it even. Um, and what that will result in 
is something like this, just like a, you know, a lumber. Um, Basically, it's like, very similar to a sheet good that, that, that came to us. Um, but this gives us the option that, you know, what we run into is that buying a sheet good works, but when we're getting into grain matching and wrapping veneers and things like that in, in you know, especially large format panels, we want to be able to control where that veneer stitching is. Yep. Um, and that stitching is, is referencing the, you know, connection of two flitches. flitches which is basically a, a slip of that paper thinner. Exactly. This is all flat stock, but one of the fir the reason we bought this bag to begin with is for our Seltang kitchen, which had some curved cabinetry. Uh, and that was a basic, we're not doing it until we buy a bag. We bought the bag and we built some really, really cool uh, curved cabinetry. So why was that so crucial in curved work? So when we're making curved doors like that, sure, we can make the, the solid stock in a form outside of the bag. But that center panel, we absolutely need to have that dead flat. And again, this is where that even pressure going across the whole surface comes into play here. So what we're able to do is create a form that gives us the radius that we're looking for with thin strips of plywood or thin, thin strips of, of sheet good. Mm -hmm. We're able to basically make our own plywood and curve it to whatever shape we want, line it up with our doors, Send it, send it home. And I think in that we had a center panel of three eighths and I think we did it out of th three layers of eighth inch MDF. Mm -hmm. um, but we, you had mentioned the solid stock, we could have done that in by clamping it or even cutting it out of a, 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 a wider glue out piece. But we chose to also bend that. And we did that similar where you're basically re it down, down to small strips and then bending it. Yep, that's correct. One of, the, one of the important things that I know, and we didn't really touch on it, but oftentimes you're using locating, locating blocks. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of those rail, rail and styles. When you put that over the form, you can't just put that in there and kind of let the bag do its thing. You're using locating block, I just made that up, guide blocks, whatever, but something to hold it from, when, when you're pushing pressure on it, you don't want it to slip. Yeah. Exactly, and when we're, when we're doing something like that, it's very easy in that case for the pieces to shift, and that will give us, yeah, it'll keep our curve, but it'll also add a twist to it, which will cause huge issues later on. Think about from a grain perspective, you, you're spending all that time lining up the grain to be dead center. If something shifts, you're not center anymore, or that door gets installed and it's, and it's, and it's veneered, that veneer goes up and it shifts off to the left or right. I mean, that's, that's why we're, you're taking, you guys are taking the time to make sure that everything is put into the bag straight and then there's something that's preventing it from slipping or moving around. Yeah, in, in many cases. So I hope that answers the technical questions behind what is a vacuum bag and how we use it here in the shop. Uh, I'm sure there's been a bunch of B-roll added to this video so you can kind of see it in action. Uh, if you guys want more questions answered, whether from myself or anyone on the team, please comment in the section below uh, and we'll be sure to answer it on an upcoming coffee break. As always, we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next week. All right, let's you go. You keep downsizing. Let's roll. You're rolling, you're rolling. Check, check, one, two. Come on, ride the train. And ride it. I love that song. Good? Are you recording? Yes. All right. You ready? Episode nine, coffee break. <laughs> this week.